welcome to In My Mug episode 286 on Monday the 5th of May 2014. Happy Bank Holiday. I am your host Stephen Layton. Welcome to In My Mug and welcome to the news. Lots of new coffees coming up in the next few weeks. Some very, very, very interesting lots too. Uh, I am very excited about the coffees we're going to be offering, and particularly on in my mug over the coming weeks, like some stellar stuff. Starting today as well. Today is a one of my all-time favourite coffees. But we've got Nicaraguans have just arrived. Costa Ricans arrived a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we've got a Burundi natural arriving today. Uh, Ethiopians landed in port yesterday and are on their way here. It's like so exciting. So much good stuff coming. Keep cups. Have you heard of keep cups? Keep cups are the reusable takeaway cups that you can get. You quite often see them for sale in coffee shops. Well, we have them at uh, the URL go.hasbeen.co.uk forward slash keep cups on your screen now. And if you use the coupon code IMM keep, so K E E P, uh, you will get 15% off, but it's a secret just between in my mug because it's not for anybody else. So if you've wanted one of those keep cups, we have a few different colours and a few different options. Go to that URL on the screen and you will be able to get them. Guest blend. It's that time of the month again where it's time for the guest blend. And this month we're doing something a little different. We have relaunched Jabberwocky. Um, Jabberwocky is one of our blends that we've read on the label. We've done a, 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 a video for it. Um, and lots of our wholesale accounts use it. We're actually going to be visiting one of those over the coming month um, when we take In My Mug on the Road. Uh, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we should look at the new Jabberwocky video. That was one heck of a cool video and if you want to buy it, um, as it won't be in my mug, um, you can buy it at the URL go.hasbeen.co.uk forward slash jabber and thank you to Tentacle who made that amazing video for us. They're the guys who help us with lots of this video stuff. And that was the news! So we should get focusing on and this week we're going to be looking at Costa Rica and its economy. So coffee production has played a key role in Costa Rica's history and continues, coffee continues to be super important to the country's economy. Um, in 2006, coffee was Costa Rica's number three export um, and its number one cash crop uh, and has been for several decades. Um, so number one export cash crop. Um, in 1997, uh, this is the only figures I could find, 28% of the labour force were employed in agriculture, which is pretty huge, so it means over a quarter of the population are paid to uh, agronomically. Um, the econ economy though in Costa Rica is incredibly stable, unlike most places that rely on uh, agriculture because of commodity prices going up and down. Um, they also have a very heavy tourism, agriculture, of course, and I've already spoke about and ec uh, electronic exports in fairly equal amounts, which is unusual. Most uh, Central American countries rely on one thing quite heavily or the other, um, but Costa Rica is kind of clever in that way. Uh, a very well educated country as well, uh, with a literacy rate of 98%, um, uh, just very high for Central, Central or Latin America. Um, the country has been successful in attracting many important investors. Uh, Intel, uh, they're employed nearly 3,500 3, people um, in its custom-built $300 million microprocessor plant. Um, very near to San Jose is a perfect example of that. Somewhere where they've got external investors to come in and spend lots of money. Um, and they have a £1.92 billion a year tourism industry. Um, Costa Rica stands alone as the most visited uh, nation in Central America, um, which again is testament to the way that they've thought about balancing their economy in lots of baskets. So no eggs in one basket, um, kind of spreading them around. And that was Focus On. So we should look at this week's coffee. Uh, this week's coffee is an old favourite. It is one of my all-time favourite coffees. If you ask me to rate my top five coffees ever, this will definitely be in there. 
first bought in the Cup of Excellence auction in 2007, where I think it finished fourth that year. Um, and now we're in our seventh year of buying it because we've continued to buy it since Cup of Excellence. What I'm very proud of, because it shows my development as a roaster. Um, I say we first bought in Cup of Excellence, uh, which is a great way to me to grow. For me, the Cup of Excellence program is about speed dating growers. It's not about uh, buying a fancy lot at a high price. It's about trying to build a relationship that we can have later. Lots of people use it as a beauty pageant. Me, I use it as a dating site. Um, then we brought it in with an importer um, because we were a tiny coffee buyer at the time, smaller than we are now, and they helped us bring in this coffee. And then they decided, the importer that is, that they didn't want to sell it to kind of work with them anymore. So we went to the farm and we did the deal directly. And it kind of shows like the way that they work was I walked onto the farm and I said to them, okay, I want to buy you coffee. I've bought it for the last five years. I think it's delicious. What price can we do? They all went, I can't even remember what the price was. It's about 370 a pound, which, you know, green FOB in the country is, is a good price. It's a very good price. We, yeah, great. Shook hands, jumped in the four before and we drove off. Um, and we've agreed pricing going forward. So we've actually got a contract with them now for European exclusivity on this coffee. Um, so, but we've had to pay for that. So we paid more for this than we have pretty much all the other Costa Ricans this year. But we've kind of underwritten some of that because that's how important this coffee is to me. Um, if you see Licho on sale anywhere else in Europe, it's not this year's, it's past crop, it's old stuff. We've got that exclusive deal with them um, and really so we can protect the name of the farm. Like, I want to do a great job with it and, and I want to be able to, to, to look after it. So it's grown in the region of Naranjo, which is in the uh, Northern Cordillas Cor Corridor uh, of the Western Valley. Um, it's grown by the Aguilera brothers um, and it's uh, grown at around about 1,500 metres above sea level. Um, the varietal is Villa Sarchi with a tiny bit of Katura. Uh, this is the Villa Sarchi. We don't buy the Katura. The Katura um, is blended away in their estate mix. Um, it's a honey processed coffee, which is kind of like the pulp natural method, where the fruit is removed from the seed with um, uh, like a mill, uh, a micro mill, and then left to dry. Um, the main difference from the pulp natural is there's more mucilage left on. So more mucilage is left, less water is used. Um, and then this can be dangerous, so it can over ferment, it can kind of go too far if you don't know what you're doing. But in Costa Rica, they do it because water is limited. Naranjo water is, is, is a super precious, uh, rare commodity. Um, so they use this method to make sure that they don't use as much water uh, and, and as little water as they can. Um, but the problem is, is if while it's drying, if you don't look after it and turn it, it can kind of clump and cluster and like mucilage up. Um, so you need to keep turning it regularly to make sure it doesn't over ferment, to make sure you get a good even cup. But luckily for us, the Aguilera brothers are probably some of the best processors of honey, uh, honey styled coffee. I've ever come across and for me in the cup it actually tastes a lot like a washed coffee it's a very delicate honey in that they use it's not one of these stupid over fermented kind of crazy things it's it's got a little bit of kind of kick in there but it's it's very clean and super well processed so we should look at the numbers the farm is called Finca de Licho. it's owned by the Aguilera family uh, it's nearest kind of town is Naranjo uh, it's in the Arjula region of Costa Rica uh, the farm is 28 hectares a uh, growing area of 9.1 hectares with the rest of it is natural forest. Um, they have an uh, altitude of 1,500 metres, um, Villa Sarchi and Katura, but this is the 100% Villa Sarchi, um, and it is yellow honey processed um, uh, uh, at the mill, uh, which is like a joint mill they have for all the farms. So we should go look at what Daphnis Roland wants to tell us this week. Nine percent of Costa Rican exports go to the UK behind the United States of America, the China and the Netherlands. Who would have thought it, eh? Who'd have thought it indeed, Roland? It is now time for the wonderful map bit. Oh, look. There's me. Oh, bye. You're off then. Up, up and away. So we're going up into the sky and there's good old Blighty. And we're going our familiar route across the Atlantic. Um, 
And to Central America, I'm so pleased the Centrals are back. This makes me incredibly happy. Um, and we're going to go to one of my favourite farms. As I said in the in my mug, probably my top five, one of my top five coffees of ever. So, um, and definitely my favourite coffee from Costa Rica. So we're going to zoom down into Costa Rica and we're going to look at the facts. It's known as the hummingbird capital with over 52 different species. That's dafter than Roland's dafter. So, um, yeah, let's go down to the farm level. And obviously Angelina is one of the family farms and we can see Angelina there and we can see Licho there, um, both owned by, by, by the family. And they're very, very close to each other. They, there's literally a road in between them to border. And if Google Earth was any good, we'd be able to see the road. But Google Earth decided to go a little bit vague here. Um, you can see that there's not a lot of detail. So what we're going to do is zoom down to ground level and you can look at the typography. So there you can see all of the typography. And we can see that the highest point there, but interesting, the lowest point, so below sea level in the caves of Barahunda National Park. So um, I'm going to check that out next time. Let's have a whiz round here so you can see the two farms. At either side, there's a road in the middle that you can't see. Um, but really, that's around about 1,500 metres you're looking at there, which is fairly standard for the coffee grown regions of Costa Rica. Um, you know, see like 11 to like 17, 18. I I think I've seen as high as 2000, um, but that's in Tarazu. But there we go, that was the map bit. So, not the best of map bits. Google Earth didn't like Licho, he doesn't like that area. They haven't got the really great overhead views of it. Um, but who cares when the cup's this good? So, I'm going to go and make some tasty coffee. I'll be back with you in just a minute. So, I'm back, and we're going to dive straight into the espresso. So, let's go in there first. So the thing you notice about this is it's super smooth and it's really clean. It's got a beautiful kind of like bite in acidity, but it's not like one of those stupid sour ones. And I don't see this very often in coffee, but it really reminiscent of a, a, like a fresh raspberry, that kind of biting in, it's just like, and just really clean. Um, as an espresso, it's really, really, really good. Um, into the milk. So the milk, Sweet, just sweetens up that sweetness, makes it more smoother. Like, milk in this doesn't make it a bad thing at all, and it's probably one of my favourite cappuccinos as well, if I've kind of got to choose one. Like, this is one I would definitely go to again. And I have, I'm kind of, while I was in Seattle last week, I had a little bit of milk as well, and it's unusual for me. So, the, the brewed coffee this week, we're going to be doing, we've done a siphon. Um, and if you don't remember, we've done a siphon guide, and I'm going to share that video with you now. Hello everybody and welcome to the next in the Has Been Brewing Guide. This time we're going to look at the vat pot or siphon as it's sometimes called. But before we get there we're going to need some things. First of all a cup, a spoon to be able to agitate the brew, some freshly roasted coffee of course, a grinder, a burner, a kettle will speed up the process a heck of a lot and of course a vat pot. Now, you can get quite a few different styles of these vac pots, but we're going to concentrate on the Hario and the Kona ones. That's because they're my favourites. With the Hario one, you need to extend the spring down and to lock the filter into place. With the Kona one, it's much easier as you just drop in the glass stopper. While you're doing all that and popping the filters into place, it's best if you boil the kettle just before you're ready to start. Stop it at around about 80 degrees C. Weigh out 30 grams of coffee ready in the grinder to go. The grind is set fractionally finer than you would for a Chemex or a V60, but not quite as fine as you would for filter. Pour 500ml of water into the bottom chamber and place the top funnel loosely in place. Also put the burner ready under your siphon. Now it's time to light the burner. Fire, fire, start the burner! Now if you have a temperature probe, now is the time to admit you're a geek and put it into the bottom chamber. If you don't have a temperature probe, shame on you. Now when the temperature reaches 92, remove the probe and drop in the top funnel. Now this is where the scientist in me gets very excited watching the water rise. Now as soon as that water starts to rise, start grinding. And no, I don't mean in that way. When all the water from the lower chamber has risen to the top, 
add the coffee. Quickly stir and wet all the grounds and start a timer if you have one. Allow to bloom for around 30 seconds and then give it another quick stir. Water should all be in the top and balancing. Temperature in the top can be checked. Should be around about 90 to 92 degrees C. At 2 minutes 30 seconds, it's time to stop the fire. Remove the burner and give it a quick stir before it starts to draw down. The total brew time is about 3 to 3 minutes 15. And that's it. Enjoy your siphon or vac pot coffee. There's no more delicious way to enjoy your coffee than this, and I hope you enjoy our method. I hope you enjoyed this brew guide, and I hope you take time to watch some of the others that we've done. My name is Steve Layton, and do remember that life is too short for bad coffee. And we also have these brew, these cards as well. So if anybody wants one and you've been my mug subscriber, drop me an email and I will pop one in your order next time. Uh, but they're, they're on the site. You can download and print one. You don't have to have the card, but I know you probably will. So we'll uh, just drop me an email. Um, so into the siphon. So there's a big problem with siphons is most of the time everybody goes, oh, it's not as good as what I could have done. And I haven't brewed this one, Roland brewed it. Um, and I've got to admit it's quite nice. Yeah. Mate, it's the coffee though. That's what I'm gonna say. There, there's my cup out. I can't say anything's nice to Roland. The coffee's delicious. It's just super sweet. And that raspberry again comes through even more. And it is so clean. It really just transparent. Like one of my top five all time coffees. And I hope it's one that you're all gonna enjoy. Okay, I'm going to wrap up because we've had a lot of videos and a lot of stuff this week. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, as always. And do remember, life is definitely too short for bad coffee. Okay.